guys, welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me as always is CEO and founder of Watch Mojo, Ashkan Karpisfrushan, to discuss Elizabeth Warren's idea of breaking up big tech. Well, what do we think? Amazon, Google, Facebook, no more. <laughs> um, okay, so the argument she's making is basically that these are monopolies, um, and I guess she's projecting that they harm the consumer somehow. Look. Could you, I studied, so let's see how dark we want to go. So I've been the, you know, you guys know that Watch Mojo has fought uh, publicly and behind the scenes for YouTube to kind of reflect copyright law and fair use. And they're caught between a rock and a hard place. And I've kind of gone, you know, up a mountain and said, okay, what are like the options we have? And you know, I've looked at many things like getting like a declaratory judgment, which would be kind of meaningless in many ways. That kind of YouTube has to do certain things. I've looked at that, right? I've looked at, can you go and get an injunction against YouTube to break content IDs, kind of unfair uh, playing leveling ground, uh, leveling, like it doesn't level the playing field between claimants and rights holders. Uh, versus channels like Watch Mojo, and I'm like, what's the point? You're gonna get an injunction, you're gonna piss off YouTube the way Viacom pissed off you know, YouTube? That makes no sense. Um, you could go and get like a class action lawsuit against some of these intermediaries that represents rights holders who then kind of abuse content ID against channels and that. I'm like, it's kind of interesting. And so in this process, as I sit down with lawyers, I've kind of like gone, down, not that I'm planning any of this, Google, by the way, but I'm just saying <laughs> as I've kind of researched all of our options, one of the things that I've had to kind of go in the history books is research monopolies. Two monopoly cases that I've studied quite in depth are Standard Oil, the Rockefeller uh, wealth, source of wealth, and AT&T. <clears throat> Both of those cases in the end uh, you know, were, were found to be you know, antitrust cases, monopolies, they had to be broken up. And to really, really distill it, the issue was that they had, I mean there's a whole checklist, but the issue was that like, these companies had dominance vertically, horizontally, um, and they kind of hurt, they killed competition and hurt consumers, right? <clears throat> so. If you wanted to break down uh, Warren's argument here is you would have to go and draw a checklist of AT&T, uh, Standard Oil. She's referring to Microsoft, but Microsoft is a weird case to cite here. We'll come back to that in a second. And make the case that whether it's Google or Amazon, these companies map some of the same checklist items that AT&T and Standard Oil did. And I have a document sitting somewhere in a vault that can make that argument. The challenge, though, is, I, I'm sure somebody at Google is hacking into my Gmail, by the <laughs> way, as we speak. I think the challenge is more, can you then take the next step, which I think, I'm not sure, I'm not a lawyer, by the way, I just pretend to be one. You do have to demonstrate that there is some harm to the consumer. Do you really care that Google Maps, Gmail, YouTube, and Google are all part of the same company? No. No. Do you actually view it as it's beneficial that you get free Google Docs, free Gmail? This is where Google does probably like me, making up some points. Yeah. Yeah, right? So the problem that Elizabeth Warren would have is not in the first bucket of like, are these monopolies? You can make the argument, horizontal, vertical. Her main argument is you can't run a marketplace and serve up those products, meaning if you are Amazon, you can also sell some product that Amazon has, right? So if they are selling ebooks from Audible that they own, uh, podcasts or whatever, audio products from, like they can't be marketplace and, and the seller of that product. Okay, fair enough, but where's the harm to consumers, right? You could argue that they're dominating against competition, but being really good at what you do is not a crime in of itself. But I feel like we could take this to the Facebook example and it's a whole other story. So Facebook is an interesting case because I always go, there's Facebook, the app, the blue little thing that you go and check like your you know, cousin's pictures, and then there's Facebook, WhatsApp, and, and Facebook, and Instagram, and all that. Look, you can plausibly- I mean, the Facebook I'm talking about is the one with the Russian bots getting, you know, or the targeted okay, ads Okay, so stuff. harm to consumers, yeah. yes. But, but the, the reality is, while that could very well apply to Facebook, and you can make the case that Google is a search, I don't feel like that's necessarily the harm from a, you could argue that that harms society, it harms our democracy, and that is all valid, but that's not really an antitrust argument, get it? And I think that's where, so if you take a step back, 
I commend Elizabeth Warren for actually talking about these things, same way that I commend and many other people do, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, for talking about things that historically, if you talked about, people thought you were crazy when there is merit in, in those discussions. But I just see it more as it's actually not that different. The fact that Donald Trump at his inauguration speech talked about American carnage and Ocasio-Cortez speaks about garbage when she's talking about America, how are those two things different? Right, like fascism and Nazism are actually not two ends of the spectrum. They kind of, it's a circle. They meet somewhere, uh, unfortunately. So I think we just have to be careful that this talk about uh, these are monopolies and they should be broken up. One, I, I don't really see the consumer harm. Uh, and two, I don't really see what is the alternative. And here's the irony of ironies when I said we'll come back to Microsoft. If the Department uh, of Justice would have actually gone and instead of just fines, uh, and Microsoft did have to make some changes, but my, that's nothing compared to AT&T and Standard Oil. I actually think Microsoft, and I'm not alone, most people would agree that Microsoft would be worth more today, although now they're actually worth a lot because of what happened in the last five years. But the first 15 years after that, they kind of stagnated. So if you actually took Google or Alphabet and you broke it up, the sum of the parts is worth, sorry, the individuals, if you add up individually, will be worth more. You know, like. Google Docs, Gmail, Android. Okay, here's, here's the mind-blowing thing. Mind blown. What is more dominant? Google in search, Android in mobile, Gmail in mail. Uh, there's more. YouTube in video, Chrome in browsers. Do you, do you know the answer? Well, I'm biased, I think, despite Netflix, because Netflix, I, I view it more as it's still traditional, just delivered through the internet. I feel YouTube is most dominant in terms of a moat in video because that will never catch up. You're not gonna re-upload the history of video programming on a platform the way YouTube has it. So because of that, I view that YouTube is the most dominant relative. Google is, is really dominant in search, but not just because it's got this awesome technology, it's because it's got this built-in monetization in AdWords and AdSense, which give it like, it's a two-in-one combo, right? Nobody's gonna beat that. Um, Android is beyond kick-ass, but you could argue that Apple and iOS could always mount to come back and, and come back and gain market share. You know, I, I, if Apple said we're giving away iPhones for a dollar in India, Android's gonna have a problem, you know? So, so there, I think it's not as defensive as they think. Chrome is crushing it, but you've seen Netscape, you've seen Internet Explorer, you've seen Safari, you've seen Mozilla, which is basically Netscape open source. Uh, so right now, Chrome is the, the big man on campus, but I, mean, I, I think really to me, it's far and away YouTube. That's 1A. 1B is still Google, let's not kid ourselves. Then it's kind of a, I think Android is pretty kick-ass, but I think those are all then a mishmash. I don't think, I mean, Gmail is pretty darn dominant, but I think, yeah. I, think I mean, my, my point is, those standalone businesses are gonna be worth a shitload. Same thing for Amazon. I mean, Amazon, everybody's like AWS, like AWS is a juggernaut, but it's, it's a weird argument to make because I feel most people don't even care. Now, now also, here's a little bit of Now, a, most people don't even care, but like, isn't there a negative to consumers if, like, eventually? Like, down the road, there could be because they're just like, well, we own everything now, so we're just going to do what we want. Well, look, I think there's actually more of a harm to consumers if all those companies are not funded and underwritten by the cash cow that is Google Search, let's say, right? So that is the more danger. If all of a sudden we all had to pay $20 a month for Google Docs, there's harm there, you could argue. That's why I think, like, I think if you are... You know, an interesting specter is haunting America that all of a sudden you're no longer defending or you're no longer attacking, forget communism, you're no longer attacking socialism. You now have to defend capitalism. So there are those people counting their billions that are kind of nervous. And if they study history, there would be like, hey, you know, the French ended up cutting up each other. We, we say ISIS are animals and, and that's not cool to what they do, but the guillotine, you know, the French invented this sharp, nice, awesome tool to take off heads, you know, that, it seems to me that like the reason why some people would be pissed off in America, especially add on the police crimes and the, the, all of the, the, the big mishmash, there's enough there to get a revolution going, right? I mean, so America was built on a revolution. So I feel like there are a lot of people in America that are kind of starting to sweat it a little bit. Um, but, but I think ultimately if you're like the CEO or like the investor, the, the, the shareholders of Google or, or Amazon, I don't think you're really sweating Elizabeth Warren per se. I think it's more this kind of you know, trend now of, hey, capital, capitalism is good, 
And I do think to some extent we've, we've overshot that, where it's too much wealth is in the hands of too many people. There was that- Not enough people. Too much wealth is in the hands of too few people. Yes. Uh, and, and I do think that like all, you know, what that dude at uh, Davos was saying was true, that it's great that you got Bono sitting around and talking about philanthropy, but you know, the argument that like, the rich don't pay enough taxes, yeah, I mean, no shit, Sherlock, it's, it's, it's true, right? But, but I think now what's happening is there's people like politicians who are just coming out and saying things for shock value to cut through you know, the clutter and to get the headlines, but some of them don't necessarily represent uh, like, okay, so what is the alternative that's better? I don't really think I would benefit if all of a sudden Google could make more money because it can't underwrite Google Docs and I gotta pay $30 a month for Google Docs. That's $30 that I'm not buying, you know, shampoo for my thick, illustrious hair, you know? I, I wish I remembered the wording better, but it was every billionaire is like a policy mistake. I, I would say like every, that. I would, I would, I don't disagree. I think every billionaire is a loophole. Like there is a loophole that, you know, look, I, like, to be clear, I'm not sitting on, <laughs> we're not billionaires or, but I will say this, that our accountants, you know, once you run a corporation, your accountants and lawyers come to you with intricate ways to avoid paying taxes. And I've always said it, I'm like, no, I'm like, I don't mind paying taxes pay your goddamn taxes. Like, it's like, you know, like you benefit as a society, especially here in Montreal, Quebec. I know my American, our American friends are gonna go crazy with this. We pay, we could, we have the option of paying a mere $7 a day for daycare. Awesome daycare, all right? Um, so if I wanna benefit from that to me, but again, that's why we're Canadian, it's a very different point of view. We're like, hey, well, you gotta pay some taxes, that's a lot. But I feel like every billionaire is a loophole that some accountant found brought to a client, and that's your choice. You could say, okay, yes, I could step on this person's neck, or I could kind of pay my goddamn taxes. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Uh, let us know in the comments, and check the link below for more. See you next time.